Hey, welcome back, everybody. J.R. Flatter here with my co-host, Lucas. How you doing? Mm. Uh, this is the fifth session on how to get an ICF coaching accreditation. Uh, the other four are on our website or on our YouTube channel if you want to go review those. Uh, today, we're going to focus on the ICF coaching exam in great detail. So, welcome. Yep, and just to mention again, we have a PDF checklist that you can check out in the video description. Um, it's going to lay out all these requirements. Yeah, there's a lot of numbers floating around uh, mm. in these five phases, and it's hard to keep track of it in your head, so thanks for doing that. You're listening to the Building a Coaching Culture podcast. Each week, we share leadership development, coaching, and culture development insights from leading experts who are developing world-class cultures in their own organizations. So, the coaching exam is a bit, little bit unique of the other four. So the other four, education, experience, mentor coaching, and the performance evaluation are all done under the umbrella of the accredited program. Or if you went the portfolio path, you gather them all together. The exam belongs entirely to the ICF. It's a separate fee. You schedule the exam through the ICF website. And so we have nothing to do with the exam. This is a maturation of the ICF uh, to meet and exceed the international accreditation standards. So I didn't know this until I started digging into it, but there's this international body that says, here are the requirements if you want to be an internationally accredited program. PMP is probably one that comes to mind. Uh, welding accreditations, electrician accreditations. Scrum master. Any of those, <laughs> scrum master, any of those that are internationally accepted have to go through this body and uh, comply with their requirements. And the ICF has done that. And so the exam was updated, how it was written and presented. They've engaged a third party proctor so that the ICF isn't providing the requirement and um, testing the requirement. They're independent, uh, and so that's why it's completely separate from us. The, we provide the education and preparation necessary to get ready to take the exam, uh, and then you take the exam independent of us. As I said, it's proctored by a third party. Uh, you'll have to schedule uh, the course through that third party proctor through the ICF website. It's a multiple choice exam. Uh, they say it's written but it's actually written uh, multiple choice in the uh, exam GUI. Do we still use the word GUI? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good uh, enough. <laughs> so um, that's that. As far as the content of the, of the uh, exam, it's 100% based on things that you've been learning throughout your journey, uh, the core competencies, the ethics, and the core values of coaching. And so... I've said before in previous sessions, you don't need to memorize any of that. If you've been engaged in your coaching journey, and one thing that we haven't mentioned yet, but I think is relevant here, every session that we teach, we talk about a focus competency and the markers associated with that focus competency so that we're reminding you every day, very purposefully, um, of a focus competency and its, its uh, contained markers. So that by the time you get ready to take your exam, you've gone through your mentor coaching and your mentor's done the same thing with you. They've gone through a focus competency of that day. You're going to have sufficient familiarity to pass this test. We have you know, hundreds and hundreds of data points of people who uh, have gone through our program and knock on wood, I have not heard, I wasn't ready ever. 70% is a passing score. So that means you get seven out of 10 right. And I've gotten feedback as recently as last week. Uh, someone who passed the exam wrote me a note, said, hey, I passed the exam. And it was exactly what you had told us it was gonna be. And you know, they got whatever score they got and, and passed. I know from my own experiences, I took the, the, the old test and I thought I was pretty prepared. I remember guessing three out of 10. Uh, I said, I can't differentiate the answers on these three. 
but the ICF continues to mature and uh, I'm getting less and less feedback that, you know, there's no discrimination uh, between the, the answers that you're provided. But the questions will be something like, which marker is associated with this competency? Or which domain does this marker uh, is part of? So of the eight competencies, there are four domains and you know, the competencies fall within one of those domains. And you'll have sufficient familiarity to know, well, that's the foundation comp uh, domain, those two competencies, or that's the growth domain with one competency. So again, don't treat the exam like you're cramming for a final. Yeah, sit down, review the competencies the day before, get a good night's sleep and a good breakfast. But it's not like you have, you're sitting down and trying to remember the, the signs and cosines of, of trigonometry or um, you know, particular date that a battle was fought in a particular country. That's not what the exam's all about. It's a quite legitimate test of, have you been engaged in this coaching journey? And you know, from a very practical perspective, the more you've coached and the more introspective you've been on your coaching practice, the, the stronger your coaching is going to be and the stronger your recall of these competencies is going to be. So you asked me very early on in the, the first or the second session about the difference between actually learning and, and just going through the motions. If you've actually learned how to coach and have been engaged in good faith on your journey, you're going to knock this exam out of the park. Yeah, presumably you're coming in with 60 hours of education, 100 hours of experience. There's certain accreditations, like you mentioned the PMP, that it's just like, oh, go pass the test. And in that case, you're behooved to just cram as much as you mm -hmm. can, get the test done in like a weekend. In this case, you can't really do that because you need the hours of education and experience anyways. So I agree. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And like we said in the previous session, the hours of coaching is usually what takes people the longest. So even if you have all of your hours of education, long before you have your hours of coaching, stay engaged in the coaching community. Go to the live coach training in the evening, attend the boot camp uh, as a refresher. That's the best kind of preparation that you can make. We teach live coach training three days a week, and we have students in there who've been with the cohort for several years long ago got their accreditations, but they stay in to stay refreshed. You're going to need continuing coaching education for your recertification, so you might as well stay engaged in the community. But certainly between the time you complete your required hours of training uh, and taking the exam, stay engaged. And then I also wanted to shout out to the cool programs in the military for certification. That was one of the barriers having this proctored exam Absolutely. before it would appear on cool. Yeah, there were several things. And one of them was they wanted them to comply with the ISO standards. So in addition to comply with the international accreditation, ISO is a quality uh, measure of quality. And so the ICF aligned themselves with the uh, ISO and with the accrediting body. And for those that don't know, this is a way for Army um, active duty only or? Um, no, Air National, all the- All um, the branches. Yeah, it's difficult to explain, <laughs> but every service has their own uh, policies. To let people get certifications yeah, and, and yeah. get it paid for through their employers. Yeah, COOL stands for Credentialing Opportunities Online. Okay, got uh, <laughs> And we're one of the approved vendors for ICF coaching through the COOL program. You know, we've talked several times about going through an accredited program or going through the portfolio path. Another advantage of going through uh, an accredited program is you're gonna get results from your exam immediately. If you go through the portfolio path, you're gonna submit your transcripts and recordings and it's gonna be 18 to 22 weeks and then they'll schedule you for the exam. So again, remind everyone, might take a little longer than you think, but actually it's going to be much more, much quicker if you go through an accredited program. Yeah, we mentioned kind of working backwards from your goals. Like it's easier if you have this goal in mind, I want ACC rather than I just want to explore. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you go on the ICF website, they do have uh, study materials. Oh, practice tests, yeah. for example. Practice tests, study materials. 
But again, I'll reiterate, if you've gone through the journey in good faith, you're going to be ready. Yeah, I know there's some among us that are a little more stressed out by test environments and things. So in that case, yeah, do the practice and try to yeah. get, get rid of the butterflies. Yeah, but I definitely don't recommend staying up until the middle of the night, cramming and you know, coming with sleep in your eyes and exhausted. You don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, less less cramming and more sleep is more beneficial probably. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. That is phase five of the five phases of ICF accreditation. All of these phases are going to be on our website and on our uh, YouTube channel. Thanks for being here with us. And uh, Lucas, I think you have your last oh, man. testimonial of... Uh, yeah, I mean, there are resources on our website. Uh, we'll be linking to ICF resources as well. And this should be your one-stop shop for everything that you need in terms of getting your credential. So. Great. Thank you. Well, that concludes this episode of Building a Coaching Culture. I truly hope that this episode was helpful to you. If it was, be sure to follow us wherever you listen to podcasts. Maybe stop and give us a rating or review and share this podcast with someone who might find it helpful as well. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.